Yeah, thanks. Uh, so, yeah, my name is Andy Greenwell. I'm a member of the team at Julie Computing. Uh, this project, uh, I'll start off, it's, this is my advertisement section. Uh, this was a, a consulting project that uh, we did recently and got uh, permission from the client to present the work here. There's a, a notebook and some source code in this rep repository, uh, but contact us if you guys, anyone in the audience has any uh, need for assistance in custom de development or uh, uh, application integration in your uh, infrastructure. Uh, so the project requirements for this particular uh, application, uh, the client has had a, a desire to integrate Julia into their existing infrastructure. They had identified some root finding and optimization libraries that they currently use that they wanted to try to replace. Um, they wanted us to actually continue to allow them to use those libraries though, so they wanted to provide a Julia wrapper for the, their existing C optimization and root finding solvers. Uh, but integrate Julia into that overall workflow. So basically call Julia from C. And one of their key requirements though is they have a large number of existing cost functions, derivative functions that they wanted to continue using without having to wrap. So call, call those functions in C without having to touch them at all. Uh, so the uh, main requirement there is create a, a, a solver that we can use the existing Julia infrastructure, but use their existing cost functions. Um, and overall, create a, an infrastructure where they could have their front office uh, employees develop Julia code that they could then deploy to a back office without a lot of recoding. And so, in this talk, forward versus reverse is a little different than what uh, Jarrett and Miles have been talking about. Uh, a forward communication solver is kind of what you find in most Julia optimization refining packages, Optum, NLOPT, uh, Roots, et cetera. And what, what is a forward communication solver? Well, it accepts the objective and derivative functions as arguments that have a particular signature, and the solver will internally invoke uh, that function, uh, or objective function or derivative function as needed. And as they've been discussing in the previous uh, talks how it allows for some powerful uh, techniques, uh, automatic differentiation and such. But you do need to often provide your objective function or cost function with a particular signature that the uh, solver expects. And for this particular uh, project, the client didn't want to wrap all of their C uh, cost functions and objective functions, and they might not have the exact signature that would be needed by the solver. Uh, so it wasn't really desired for this client environment. Uh, so a reverse communication solver is a classic technique where the objective and the derivative functions are not actually passed as input arguments to uh, the root finding or optimization solver. Instead, you actually return to your calling environment, execute the function as needed, get the value that's required, and then jump back into the solver. Uh, and hopefully at the, the same point where you exited from, so that you can then progress uh, to the point where you get to your exit condition and finally have your uh, optimized value or root. So an example of a forward communication solver in Julia, here's from the opt-in package, and you, know, you can see that you know, here's the function signature that gets executed within Optum, and it has some particular signature that was expected. Uh, actually, I guess you guys can't see that. It's, it's, uh, okay, sorry. I won't be able to show you source code from here because the presentation mode is slightly different. But yeah, so Optum expects its, root find, its uh, objective function to have some particular signature. And, right, do I? Okay. So one way to transform a forward communication solver to a reverse communication solver is a very mechanical process where you trace the execution of the forward solver, find the location where every objective function or, or derivative function is evaluated, then and also use some type of stateful object where you're storing the position within the solver, the objective function, the derivative values, and your current location, exit as needed from the forward communication solver, uh, evaluate your function, and then return in. And so you end up calling that solver repeatedly until you get to the point of 
hitting your exit condition. Uh, you can look in the notebook that's linked in my repo that has an example of this uh, process, but overall it's kind of an error prone and tedious development process. So for this particular project, um, I have Jeff to thank for this. I uh, told him about the client requirements and he came up with this idea. Uh, uh, so what we're using here are tasks or coroutines to basically allow you to switch back and forth between a sol the solver uh, being executed and its calling environment. And so this is basically the overall idea for, the, for this topic. Uh, so some example code here, we uh, define a main task, have some stub function that provides redirection where we're yielding back to the main task whenever it's called, have our initial guess for the root, uh, or for the, op op yeah, for the root, uh, call, create a task for the solver, and then have this driver while loop that we define, which within the loop we have some objective function that gets evaluated, and when we get to C, this doesn't actually have to be uh, some Julia function, it can be some, any arbitrary function that gets executed, but we take that value and then pass it back and yield to the solver. So you're switching back and forth here within the solver uh, between its uh, scope and the outer calling scope. And finally, on completion here, the result value will have the output of this uh, task for the solver that was created. So, and you can, once again, look in the notebook that I have linked and have, see an example that's a bit more complicated that uses objective uh, functions and gradient functions. So uh, the next set of requirements for, the, for this project was to embed all of this in C. And you, know, you can use the Julia C API in the same, to embed uh, Julia code into various other languages. But uh, for this particular project, we're embedding in C and have a, you know, meets all of the different requirements that we laid out at the beginning. So as you can see, embedded Julia code is tiny um, on the, the left there. But, so here's the example of uh, what we end up doing in C, um, define your headers, perform all of these different operations for wrapping the main function, initializing Julia, uh, calling our task-based function, sh uh, shutting down. Here's some example C code for defining our objective and gradient. Um, then we're uh, accessing the functions that we need from base Julia, defining our main function, allocating some arrays and then performing all of the, the same logic that was in a previ previous example for uh, basically uh, setting up the problem as need be from within your C code, but to access Julia. But here's the, the, the main uh, while loop that we implemented in previously in Julia, but implemented in C. So I think I'm out of time now, but uh, for summary, uh, most Julia packages for finding an optimization use some type of forward uh, communication strategy, as they should. Uh, Julia tasks can actually be utilized to transform those existing forward communication solvers into re reverse communication solvers without actually altering the internal code at all. And these reverse communication solvers can be embedded in a C application using Julia's C API. So that's it. Any questions? Stefan. Um, I have no, not heard complaints as of yet from this particular client. So uh, I, th I think uh, we are still progressing on overall integration into their infrastructure. But as of right now, they're currently happy with the performance, I believe. I do not, I haven't been privy to the internals of their objective function uh, implementations, but uh, like I said, thus far they seem to be happy with the performance that we've given them. So, yeah. Anything else? Thank you.